like your job is a really good job to do if you are going on cruise ships to see the world then. Hi guys, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and I am here with Dino and Stacey who are a duet on board cruise ships and they are called North by North East. So hello Dino, hello Stacey. Hello. Yeah. What is your official job title on board? So we are resident musicians. Can you please go into detail about your job on board? Our responsibility is primarily just to entertain the guests that are on. And it's basically just to play music and, and uh, we just keep everybody in the, in the bars and spending money and stuff like that. What made you decide to be a duet on board cruise ships? So we had worked on land in hotels as resident musicians and we did a lot of travelling but we used to spend say six months in one place. So we thought, how can we see more places in a shorter amount of time, if you know what I mean? Um, so we just decided if we could to try and get on the cruise ships, um, do a bit of travelling. So obviously it's it's more work, but the you know the sights that you see and everything, it was just absolutely amazing. It's like you said about that six months thing, the contracts were, were short, so it's like three, four months as opposed to six months at a time. All right, so they're like better contract lengths than hotels were offering. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How do you get into this? So if someone is watching this and they are a musician and they want to work on cruise ships, what do they need to do? It's a case of that you need to build your, rep your, your repertoire is probably by far the most important thing. I think when we started and we were gigging in, in bars and lands we worked for about a year, we had maybe some max of like 30 kind of well-known songs. Yeah, because um, you only really needed an hour show because you were playing in different places every night. Whereas when you're playing in the same place, yeah. you have to have, well, they suggest most places it's 200, over 250 songs. So you really just need to build it and you're meeting so many different people. You have to learn different styles of music. Especially on a cruise ship, with the amount of sets that you do, you need 300 songs yeah. to, 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 not, to really not repeat over a, probably a 10 day, two week period. To answer your question, um, someone again that we know because you know what it's like it's not what you know it's who you know um, she passed our details on to her agent and he we sent him off our all of our promo material he's got in touch with me and said you know like these guys would probably be really suitable for the ships and, and that's when it happened wasn't it so, yeah repertoire get um, find, an, find an agent because you have to go you have to go through an agent to get on cruise ships you can't just apply through the companies themselves when you look at the ships like uh, Morella, they're all specifically one agency, so that's like Peel Talent. Um, Talent. But when you look at, yeah, Peel, Peel Talent, they, they look after, I think it's Morella. Well, um, they did anyway. Yeah, they did, yeah. So whereas with P&O, um, it's basically all independent agents. What's the process like? So you get an agent and I guess you tell the agent that you would like to work on cruise ships and then what happens then? Well, we were in New York at the time when we got our first contract. So that would have been, it was almost a year, I think. It was probably seven months, seven, eight months before we actually got out. It was just really a case of he sent us an email. We didn't get a choice or anything. Um, they just say to you, can you do these dates or they'll ask you what dates you can do and then they'll try and slot you in somewhere and um, so that was it really it was just um just a waiting game of finding out where you're going and what date it could, it could be as long as we waited but then again if it's emergency cover it could yeah. be two three days what happens in the way of getting your medicals seamen's books c1d visas like do you have to sort that out yourself or will your agent help you yeah that's um that's something we sort out ourselves so our agent will just um tell us all the information that we need to get and what we need to do and then uh obviously we've got to go and we've got to have a, have a you know you know the crack with your medical and things like that and then uh i think you pay for it if you pay for it it gets reimbursed it usually yeah, does it usually does do you receive any training from the cruise line prior to joining or do you just get like the basic safety training when you get on board? Yeah, that's all that's we it. got. And in terms of our actual job, there was no training other than the agents saying um, get some get like some themed sets together. So 60s, 70s, a tropical party, Motown, that sort of thing. That was really the only 
information we had before we um, before we got on the ship. Who is in charge of creating your schedule? The musical director's in charge, so they put the schedule together every week for us, and you get it per yeah. cruise, or you get you get your two weeks, and it tells you exactly where you are and what day and stuff like that. And then, in the way of clothing. What were you told to take? Do you have any kind of uniform or when you're performing, can you just wear what you want to wear? You've just got to be, in essence, as as smart as the guests. And obviously it's the venue that you're playing. So for the tropical night, so if you're up on the top deck, you kind of, it's, it's bright, loud shirts and stuff like that. Oh, and you, can, and 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 you, can, you can wear like smart tailored shorts and stuff like that. And on a night, you still, even if it's a, an outrageous shirt you've still got to have a pair of like smartish trousers on um but it's and the only one thing that that you that we had to take i, I did get a tux because obviously we, we were asked to do captain's gala um so i had to buy a tux what about you stace in terms of your dress you just made sure you had a different dress on every night for two weeks didn't you yeah yeah it's just or you know nice trousers and a top or a jumpsuit just something I, I always like to wear heels as well. I don't know if I don't know if you're required to wear heels, but when you're on stage, you always feel a bit better. But you can choose that. Like you take what you want to yeah. take. You kind of have the best of both worlds. Like your crew, but you're also guests. As in, like you don't have to do drills. Can you please go through like a normal embarkation day? This used to start at quarter past twelve. Our first set um, was quarter past twelve. Yeah, so we we play probably three sets, three 45 minute sets over the course of the afternoon up on the top deck when people are getting off and getting on and things like that and it was, it was basically just chilled out stuff wasn't it? Um, yeah the last the last set that we would do um, would normally be by then the majority of people are on so they wanted it to be upbeat you know people are at the start yeah. of their holidays so. And then so you have like the morning and the evenings free? I think we used to, that was a, sometimes a five set day for us, so yeah. we would then do two sets in the pub, I think, or the pub or the casino, it varied. Okay. Alright, so it's quite a busy day for you then. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, yeah, listen, we can't, we can't comment on busy days, mate, I can see, I can look the hours you put in, in it was a busy, it's five hours of singing and playing, yeah. So. yeah. Alright, and then what about a C day? That was the same, really, the, um... The C days, they were quite, um, they always had someone playing at the poolside, so it would either be the band or the soloist or us. Yeah. Um, so that would be the same two, normally two sets on that day, um, and then three sets at night. The maximum sets we would do in a day would be five. So if you did two sets um, by the pool, then you would do three sets at night or vice versa. All right, brilliant. And then what about a port day? So. Yeah, the port days are probably the most frustrating because you've got a ton of people getting off the ship because that's what they've got on the cruise ship to do. So we play probably a set at quarter past twelve on the top deck, and there'd be like six people there, and like that's not exaggerating as well. Like there was times when there was like six people. There. Actually, got thousands of people just. If you, you you're getting up into a port like Mykonos or Santorini, you're not going to stay on the ship either unless you can get off the ship. So that was probably the most frustrating part. And so was that every port day? Or I assume there were some days where you would only be singing in the evening, so you got all day to go off and enjoy the ports. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we did get to see, I think, we, we saw it everywhere, didn't we? Because, you know, if you were, if we did see, um, I don't know, Venice, I think we did Venice three times. Yeah. We yeah. got to see it at least two, because between the band, the soloist and the duo, we all take turns, so... Um, we did get to see everywhere and we're fortunate in that way that apart from the sets we don't work during the day we don't have to do IPM or anything like that so yeah we were really fortunate to to be able to get off in most places yeah yeah okay so like your job is a really good job to do if you are going on cruise ships to see the world then I suppose yeah yeah, yeah it's, it, it is we like we, we, we don't take for granted what we do, we know, we know we're very fortunate. Are you considered officer status? Yeah. Because you're, like, because you're kind of considered a guest. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we're, not... we're guest status in the way that we're supernumerary, 
but we have officer states as well so we can eat in the officer's mess and we can be out in the guest areas as long as you've got your badge on as you know um we don't have curfews or anything like that and we're allowed to eat in the um like the special restaurants and stuff as well so yes yeah, it's, yeah. it's oh, one thing one thing to say like i i've, I've never put weight on in my life never <laughs> ever ever put weight on like no matter how much i've eaten oh it must but, be so hard for you honestly <laughs> but within honestly within our first month on there six weeks my my shit like my shit was like i thought it was shrunk because you've got to be so careful because the food is so good people had warned us about this before that it's just constant you go from and say like the buffet you've got breakfast then you've got um brunch then you've got lunch then you've got afternoon tea then you've got dinner then you've got midnight snacks and it's just then you've got 24 hour room service as well it's Oh, that, that room is room lethal. I, I'm so, I'm honestly thrilled that I don't have that privilege because I would be huge if I got room service as well. Oh. It was like, was it one pound fifty for like for whatever you a wanted? Or a bag or a pizza, okay, something okay. like that. And it's like four in the morning. You've been in the mess, you know. You've, you've had a few drinks and stuff like that, and you're hungry. It's like, listen, it's one pound fifty. So you ring it, and then literally within 15 minutes, it's sitting in the door, and you're like, ah, and then, <laughs> and then by the time you know it, you're massive. Thankfully as well, another perk of that is that um, you get to use the gym as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> However, it seems to me, I think I went three times in three months. So you take, um, take two sizes, of, sizes <laughs> one for your first uh, six weeks and then another for your six weeks after that. Definitely. Are you able to choose what ship you go on or do you just go where they send you? You just, you basically will go where, where they send you, I think. But I think probably you have to have a few contracts under your belt before you... You can start requesting. I suppose if, if you've got plenty of work and jobs other places, you can afford to be a bit more choosy. Right, so for every show that you do, it's obviously important that you maintain the same amount of enthusiasm, but surely after, you know, playing the same show over and over again, it must be difficult. So how do you maintain the same amount of enthusiasm? I think for us, we're so lucky that we have each other. Yeah. As a soloist, you're kind of having to get muster all that up on your own. Whereas we can bounce off each other. So if, for example, you're not getting, because we like, like we've said, we like to have a lot of chat and a lot of audience involvement. And if we're finding that we're not getting any of that back, you know, it can be a bit of a struggle, but at least we've got each other there to kind of keep each other going you're not just mm. standing there on your own just pushing and pushing and pushing for it when we get out to do a season we'll basically write down right right uh okay stay so write down so on the monday we use this line this line this line this joke and then we won't use that joke for another two weeks but what stace has got to do she's had to do for the last like eight years now is it obviously there's feeder lines and stuff like that that we'll give each other and there's a gag she's got to act as if it's the first time that she's <laughs> ever heard that, that joke. Standing there and I'm looking at him and I know what's coming and I'm just like, you just have to smile and pretend and you just go <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, fake laughing is a skill stay, so it's a, you should definitely put it on your CV. <laughs> do you mind me asking about your salary? No, oh, yeah, that's fine. What is your salary and do you get paid in pounds or dollars? It was in the region of four to five per week each. That's Does that sound about right to you, Dino? Yeah, that's right. Nice. And we got paid um, through the agent, so it was in pounds. So um, p and paid the agent and then he but paid us. The agent takes uh, 15%. 15% he right. took, yeah. For getting you so, the work. Okay, guys, so what are the top three skills that you need to be a good guest entertainer? You just need to be, like, you see so many people, and this is this is hosts and people when they go on stage and talk on the microphone, and they've got this stage voice, and it's like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, me. You're like, like, people just want a bit to be able to relate to you on stage, so I think the biggest, the biggest thing, first of all, it's just, 
be yourself. Like, don't be anybody else. It's fair enough. If you're a character, then fair enough. But if people are seeing you on stage and they're seeing you during the day, and I think because we have that chat in between, it's comfortable chat, and it's just as if we're chatting to somebody in front of us, and maybe it's not 150 people in, in, in front of us. Yeah. Um, so I would think that that's the key. Um, yeah, personalities are, are big. Personality, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think you obviously have to be... You have to be a good musician or a singer, yeah. but I think if you if you have that personality, you can be, you know, you don't have to be the best singer or the best guitarist in the world. If you can have that personality and you can entertain people, then that's the most important part. Yeah. You do yeah. need to be like both, just be musical and nice. <laughs> and luckily, that we that we're a bit of yin and yang in this respect, organisation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so Dino is more of a wing it kind of guy mm -hmm. and I'm more prepared. But it really shows if you're if you're on stage and you don't have everything prepared and ready to go, like your sets. But you can, you can you can have nights where you're just gonna say, Well, I'll just we'll just pick this one, we'll put this one in now. But I just think to have the sets prepared, it just makes things run so much smoother mm. and adds a, a, a higher element of professionalism, I think. And also, um, like, the jokes. You don't want to be telling the same joke twice, especially if it's crap, which normally they are. <laughs> um, you don't want to be uh, to be doing that because, you know, if people don't laugh the first time, they're not going to laugh the second time. Yeah. You know that, don't you know? So, oh, Dino, what is your favourite and least favourite thing about your job on board? What I do and get and, and, and get and get paid for it, you know. I think I think it's it's never work. It's not work, is it? If you're in a, if you're in a job that you that you absolutely love and enjoy, quite like that. And in terms of what I don't like about the job, um, guests can be brutal. Yeah. Like we didn't find that this as much on the ship as we did in the hotels that we normally work. But, you know, you can't please all the people all the time. Stace, what is your favourite and least favourite thing about the job on board? The best thing is getting... What I love about the ships is that you can perform in different places. Yeah. So you, you might not see necessarily the same people all the time, um, but at the same time, people will, if they like you, they'll follow you around. Yeah. And I think it's just getting to meet all those th different people from different walks of life. And on the flip side of playing in the different venues is, you know, car and we have a big mixing desk case that used to come back with us every night. And you know what it's like, you're going down however many flights of stairs and stuff. And, and as well, the good thing is, like Dino said, not everybody likes you. So the good thing about having the different venues is that People can just leave and go somewhere else. Yeah. They're not restricted to if they don't like you, they have to sit there and listen to you. They can just move on. So I think having the variety of the venues is, is really something that we weren't used to in the hotels. So we really yeah. liked that side of it, didn't we? What is your favourite and least favourite thing about living on a cruise ship? Favourite thing for social life, without any shadow of a doubt, um, was just so like we cared about the social life on the ships, but I don't think anything can really prepare you to actually you actually get on there. Yeah. But but that was the best thing for me, and obviously seeing seeing some amazing places. Um, in terms of the the worst part about it, you're living in a small cabin, like you are, like mm. you know yourself, loses it, it's 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 small. There's no windows or anything like that. And it caused the power jump. The air was so dry that you yeah, always had problems with your control. There was always a dry mist there and things like that. That was probably the, the hardest part, I reckon. Yeah. The worst part for me. Okay. And then, Stace, what's your favourite and least favourite thing about living on a cruise ship? Pretty much the same things. The social life okay. is just absolutely amazing. And getting to meet like my well, in a different place every day was amazing. Some of the places we got to go were just out of this world. You get to go for free, so that's pretty a pretty amazing part about it. But the worst part would be you're under a microscope quite a lot. You know, there's a lot of 
rules and and because it is a, a serious thing you're you're you do have responsibilities and stuff like that so you do feel sometimes like you're in a bit of a, a fishbowl and tensions can run at, not that we ever you know had any run-ins with people or but you know tensions can run high when everybody is together all the time there's so many more benefits than there was or so many more pros than there was cons right so to anyone watching this wanting to be a singer on a cruise ship what advice would you give them just well we said this earlier but repertoire is okay. a massive thing okay just get just get all different kinds of genres and get a wee bit of chat together just just play at your strengths okay um absolutely but i'd recommend it to the amount of people we've said like this need to go and do it go and do it we've talked about it so long and people said how much you enjoy it it's incredible it's one of the most incredible experiences that we've had isn't it best ever so i think your job is really hard to beat to be honest in terms of like you get the best of both worlds your crew but yeah. you're yeah. also guests your officers so you can basically do what you want you get a really nice amount of time off well i think i mean that's all my question guys thank you very much for answering well, them thank you so much for having us anytime yeah thanks very much mate all right guys thank you so much for watching be sure to go and follow dino and stacy over on facebook at north by northeast i will link it in the description box down below but if you have enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe but i will see you in the next video bye